So Gorbachev, one of the last leaders of communists over in Russia and all the other countries that was known as USSR. Now I'm not massively geographically minded, so I can't tell you all the countries that were in it. But the thing is, um, he was an interesting guy because he brought about a thing called Glasnost, which is openness. And he also wanted to release or relieve tensions between the East and West, which was a great thing. Because at the, at the time, growing up in the 80s, we were all under the fear of nuclear armageddon at any time and this is not just intentional but by accident in 1984 i believe it was um there was uh an alleged attack on the ussr what it was was the americans were having their training and they told the russians what was happening but the computer basically said we're being attacked now had the guy actually followed orders he would have retaliated with everything the russians had and we wouldn't be here today simple as that but because he used his instincts, because the computer had had a few glitches, he actually saved the world. And in so doing, he was punished. Uh, but he gave speeches after that. His life was ruined. But um, well, it's amazing, really. However, going aside, the, um, the, uh, the war on um, arms, right? They all built up arms on both sides, right? Um, basically, uh, it bankrupt both sides. Um, but... I believe that America bluffed it out. However, Gorbachev saw the writing on the wall, couldn't keep it up, and decided to build uh, stronger relations with Reagan, as it was at the time. Now, at the time, they were all about getting rid of all arms completely, but Reagan insisted on uh, a thing called Star Wars, which never actually took off. The idea being is you could shoot something out of orbit before it actually got anywhere near your shores, thus rendering nuclear weapons impotent because at the time we had a thing called mad mutually assured destruction this was if they launch with whatever they've got you launch everything you've got and nobody wins uh henry kissinger was one that used to talk a lot about it and there were a few others but it it kind of worked but all the time you're always wondering what actually happens if somebody does something by accident what happens is if a rogue person got in and decided to try and launch well it wasn't quite that simple you couldn't get just one man to do it so we all still lived under the fear and at the time there was frankie goes to hollywood and other people doing anti-war stuff and you had the cnd out there um when we had the, the war bases over in uh, great britain there, there were the women uh, i can't remember the camp but they were camped outside and it was a big deal so gorbachev decided that basically his people were suffering like there wasn't enough food out there and all the rest of it and too much money was being pumped into the arms race so he thought ease attentions great he would have literally got of all of his armed weapons, should um, Boris, not Boris Johnson, what did I say? If uh, Reagan had agreed to dump Star Wars, but he didn't. Anyway, going forward, um, because at the time you couldn't criticize uh, communism. Um, there were lots of, uh, I mean, if you were say for instance on a U-boat or a, a Russian, normal boat or whatever you had the the political officer i can't remember his exact name but he would be make sure that everybody was thinking straight and keep their eyes out for anybody who could be subversive you couldn't talk openly there was big cues for things like loaves of bread and other stuff that you'll all be getting used to soon okay um but he wanted to do better for his people now at the time one thing that that was uh, against uh, globalism was communism um, and at the time that Gorbachev was in position of power, um, the man that's in there now, uh, Putin, was um, in the KGB, as I believe. Now, Putin is a diehard communist. Now, if he had his way, he would turn the clocks back and he would have never let the fall of the Berlin Wall, which facilitated the collapse of uh, communism in that neck of the woods. But... It's, it's amazing because since the fall of the USSR, some places have done worse. Other places haven't. Um, it also opened up the gates for people to flood um, this country and other parts of the world with people from the states that were under the communist rule. Um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you decide. That's not for me to decide. But they were allowed to travel and so they did quickly. And they made a better life for themselves over here. There was a joke um, when you wanted to buy a, a larder. Uh, and the, the joke was this. Yes, you can have it in 
any color you like, unlike Ford back in the day, which was just black. And um, and they gave you a day, you could have it. And it was like 10 years in front. And the joke was this, can you tell me whether it's uh, morning or afternoon? And the salesman was like, does it really matter? It's 10 years ahead. He went, yeah, it has to be in the morning because in the afternoon I've got a dentist appointment. That was the joke. But it took ages for you to get a vehicle. It took ages for you to get anything. You didn't have a great deal over there. So him bringing about the end, yes, um, they've experienced things like McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, and all the big corporations like that have gone over there. But they've also experienced huge corruption. But as I remember being told back in the day that Russia and its uh, uh, states that are all part of the USSR were full of corruption. And I, uh, th there was some places that they actually had speakers on the corner punting out propaganda all day long. Can you imagine living under that? Can you imagine the only excitement you had in that otherwise great, because alcoholism was massive. Uh, the, only, the only thing you had to look forward to was going around a friend's house, which was sparsely decorated because they didn't have much, in their drab clothes because they didn't have much, and drinking vodka that could turn you blind. That was it. Vodka and chess, a lot of them. That's all they had to look forward to. But some of them regret, as I say, the fall of all that. And they reckon some of them that, that, that life is worse since. I'm trying to imagine that. What I'm also trying to imagine is having to queue up for food having to live in cold because this winter is going to be cold by the way but don't worry there'll be heat banks where you can go to somebody else's property that can afford to put the heating on and stay there usually probably an office building or something like that so we've got that to look forward to but do you think do you think he was a naive bloke that wanted the best for his country but actually in so doing what he did actually created a worse situation or do you think that he was a a man who was a visionary that wanted to bring about the end of communism and wanted basically his people to have democratic rule and that wanted his people to live more like the people in the West and have TVs, stereos, nice cars, nice clothes, go on holiday and all the rest of it. What do you think? Tell me what you think in the comments. But um, I liked what I saw of him on the TV. You don't know anything about a person just by watching that. He was great in interviews. Um... He made a good spit and image character if you've seen it but other than that yeah and this is the thing his side will demonize him and our side will make him out to be good and that's the worry because if our side are saying he's good he's probably not but if their side are saying he's bad is it propaganda and this is where we have life's very confusing because who do you trust and the only thing you can actually trust is whatever you've seen with your own eyes that you can prove or whatever you could touch. <laughs> the rest of history was written by the, the victors. So we've got a, a, what's the word, either a watered down version of the truth or a complete lie. Just, you do question everything in the past. Was that right? Was that not right? Did I get that right? Was I lied to? And things like, this leader just being one of them, Gorbachev. You, yeah. These other leaders that we held up as being great leaders, like Kennedy. So, absolute whorebag. Which literally sleep with anything that had a pulse, right? Um, and was so highly medicated, right? And was dying, by the way, that you'd have to question a little bit about him, and also that. He came from a family that made their money out of illegal activities like bootlegging, etc. And that his father was quite on board with the Nazis. Although, apparently, the, the sons were very different to the father. Now go and have a look at Churchill. Churchill in the Second World War, right, allegedly saved Great Britain because he, he was a psychopath and took, well, took risks and made decisions that any normal person during any normal time that isn't war would think mad i mean go back to the first world war we were losing the first world war and he was head of the admiralty so what happens how do we get the americans on board well it just so happens the lusitania is sailing over with a lot of very high-ranking dignitaries from america and also it's carrying armaments wouldn't that be awkward if it found its way in front of a u-boat uh which was called were they, they u-boats back then i think they had another name for them anyway 
if you look at the history, Churchill did facilitate that. Um, so down goes the Lusitania with a loss of life, but it brought the Americans into the war and they helped finish the job so we didn't fall victim to the Germans. Good. Would you have done it? Would you have managed to sacrifice X amount of thousand people so your country could survive? I would. But there again, I'm a bit meat and potatoes in that way. There's a load of other leaders that were completely altered statesmen. The man that came after uh, uh, Gorbachev was a raging alcoholic. Absolutely mangled all the time. Some might remember his plane landed in, in uh, Ireland and he couldn't get off the plane. He sat on the runway for a while and sat a bit longer and a bit longer then it took off. And he was unwell apparently. He was bladdered. Absolutely smashed out of his brains. But how many leaders have we had that were adjusted by alcohol and drugs? How many leaders have we had that are corrupt? How many leaders have we had that are mentally ill? Amazing, really. But years ago, we wouldn't get to know about it because we couldn't share any information we found, any compromising video footage or camera footage or whatever. But now we can, which is why the internet's bad for them. But just let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to get back to work and... Uh, I'll speak to you in a bit.